comfy over there? Yep, we're doing one finger steering today. It's beautiful. <laughs> Occasionally, I gotta do this. Ooh. Hard work. <laughs> As we've headed down the Exuma chain of islands, it's been some really, really incredible sailing. I would say it's some of the best we've had, and you can't ask for better water to be sailing over. Crystal clear blue. It's a much different feel on this shallower side of the Exuma Islands compared to the Atlantic side. It's been a very peaceful change. The only worries are coral heads and shallow spots. Ah, I'm not worried about that too much. We made our way down to Black Point Settlement in Central Exumas and were quickly greeted by this friendly nurse shark. With a little light left in the day, we decided to go for a little walk on land. We found the big hangout called Scorpios. While we certainly enjoy our solitude and the peacefulness of being out in, in anchorages and faraway places, uh, there's a, a reminder of what life is like to come back to civilization and see people with smiling faces and making friends with strangers and enjoying the company of other humans. I wish you were here. Oh, shoot. We enjoyed our beautiful sunset and headed back to Rum Tot to get a great night's sleep. But that did not happen. Here's a quick animation to show you kind of what we're talking about. When the boat is on a pitch at anchorage, it can be relatively comfortable. On the other hand, when the boat is on a roll, it can be an entirely different feeling on board. It was a long, was a long night on Rum Tot, goes the tale. All started off fine. Fine. Nine, eight, nine o'clock last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, about 12 31 o'clock. Uh, this uh, way, that way. Uh, this way, and that way. This way, and that way. So I didn't go back to sleep, catching everything on the beam, the anchors were in, all the waves were coming, the swell from the banks were coming in. Just rocking us back and forth. We were at the back of the anchors. So my fabulous partner here decided about an hour ago that he was done with that. Done. <laughs> and we moved up to the very front of the anchorage. A little more crowded, but we're going to get some breakfast and come back and try and take a nap. This is Coconut Palms. This is Rum Tot. That's our anchorage. We went back to town and headed up the road, and that's when Chris saw this wonderful lady who was shelling peas from a strange looking pod. Chris asked what she was working on and she responded pigeon peas, which is a traditional Bahamian dish. And she immediately offered to then take us through her garden. Is that one good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that could eat, that could eat. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah, that's papadilly. Papadilly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you so, tell me. This is Coco Plum. And this flower will turn into what? Coco Plum. This yep. is a blossom. Yep. Yeah. All, All right. these will be Coco Plum. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Beautiful. You're going to get a lot off of this. Yeah. This, you call this, this is what you get apple, sugar, apple. This is sugar, ah. apple. Sugar, apple. Apple. This is put out apple and then, and then, the, the, and then they ripe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is your this peas. Is, this is pigeon peas. Yeah. There they are. Yeah, this is pigeon peas. Agnes, you're take your harvest in the whole yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to put it in a bag. They got milk coming out of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can put them in the. I can put them in the bag. 
The milky substance that Chris is referring to is a thick substance that was originally used to make chiclets. Hey, yeah. yeah. And so we just cut this open and eat it? Yeah, yeah, you just do that. Oh. Open and eat it, right? Agnes may have a yard that looks rocky, but she has really made the most of it and had quite an abundance of variety in her yard. And then Agnes invited us into her home where things got even more interesting. It turns out her late husband was a world-class sailor. Unbelievable. Look at all the trophies. What a sailor. What a sailor. Wow. How long ago did he pass away? Two years now. Two years. Two. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at the piece. Oh my word. Agnes kindly offered to give us some peas the next day, but we were unsure if we were staying that long. We were able to snap a few pics of her husband's world famous smashy boat. Sometimes the difference between being a traveler and a tourist is when you notice locals just husking peas on the side of the road. It may be of your best interest to stop and say hello, because you never know what you'll find. like this is a little cave that pulls the water through to the hole. As we make our way through this grand adventure, we run into so many people that continue to tell us, do this while you're young. And I'll tell you what, while we're walking and trekking through areas like this, getting to places like these, it's challenging enough even for a couple of young folks like us. Walking to places most people don't go and seeing things most people don't see. We are just very happy that we're doing it now. Because what is it all for if you can't get out there and have a little fun from time to time? It's clarity, look, <laughs> right there. And they were especially gracious and wonderful to chat with, and um, they got to tell a little bit of our story and her a little bit more of their, theirs, and that was super, super cool. And they gave us these cushions that they were getting rid of. They had a little accident the other day, you'll have to watch their video to see that. And they gave us coffee. And they gave us coffee. <laughs> Thank you.
Be sure to join us next time as we head down to Little Farmer's Key, where we find the Bat Cave. Who knew it was here all this time? And we do a little bit of epic snorkeling, so be sure to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.